How's it going, everybody? So today we're going to, in Matthew 21, getting close to Matthew 24's all of it discourse, all about the end times. Hopefully, uh, we'll give you really good, good Lord willing, um, you know, really good detailed teaching on how that connects to 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, Revelation 13, Revelation 17, uh, Revelation 6. So it's, it's fascinating. Saying unto them, go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord have need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt of the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple. And if I'm not mistaken, what they were selling, it's not like they were just selling clothes or, but they were selling the items to be used um, for the Jewish ceremonies, rituals um, of the day, like maybe selling two turtle doves or unblemished lamb. How can we research that? What were the money changers selling in the temple? Money changers were there to convert various currencies into the standard coinage. The Tyrian shekel was used for payment of the annual temple tax, both the selling of animals for sacrifices. There you go. That's what we thought, the selling the animals for sacrifices. Payment of the temple tax were activities required by Jewish law and central to the temple's functions. But, you know, Jesus didn't want it done inside the temple. There's plenty of room outside. If it's raining, find a place with shelter. So anyway, we like it. Cast them out that sold and bought in the temple and throw over through the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that were, and the seats of them that sold doves, comma, get to the rest tomorrow. We do one column at a time. Out of my old, uh, my dad's old King James Bible, rest in peace. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for the sakes, but for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. So Daniel is giving the king the interpretation. Well, he's going to tell him the dream, then he's going to tell him the interpretation. I'm sure you've been following along, hopefully watching these in order on the playlist. Thou, O king, sawest to behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. Now, this is... 
mystery Babylon the Great from the biblical sense from antiquity through today. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast of and arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. And that is the final kingdom. That feet of iron and clay. That's the final antichrist kingdom. Thou sawest till that stone was cut out without hands, which is God winning, destroying mystery Babylon, which smote the image upon his feet, which is the final kingdom, that were iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass and the silver, because once you destroy the final kingdom, then you have destroyed it all because it's the end. That's why it strikes the, the, the feet and the toes. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass and the silver and the gold broken two pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. All right, we'll get to the rest of the interpretation tomorrow. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar doesn't understand that God has done all of that until Nebuchadnezzar pens Daniel 4 himself. And that's always exciting to get to also. I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.